instruction cycles. Uh, this one will be a short one. Uh, so instruction cycles in the clock. So a nice little picture here that will make a little bit more sense later. So what I want to say about instruction cycles is that you've seen them before. Um, so instruction cycles are how fast is the clock of the microcontroller going. There are two things that are important in the templates um, about instruction cycles. There's this pound pragma um, config OSC, so it stands for oscillator. Um, it says which oscillator would you like to use? We are setting it in this class to use the internal oscillator, so INT IO67. Don't worry about the details. Um, so we're using the internal oscillator always, right? There are other things you could have set this to. If you have an external crystal, it would be RC. Um, if you have something different, you would set it to, to that. Um, but in this class, we're always going to be using the internal one. The internal one is set by a special function register, three bits um, in a special function register set to speed. By default, in this class, we're going to use 4 megahertz a lot. It's just a really convenient speed for doing timing calculations. So we're going to use 4 megahertz quite a bit. It's just one that we kind of have grown to like. The way it's set um, is by looking at a um, register, uh, OSCON, no surprise. Uh, by the way, this special function register, if you wanted to see it, uh, don't forget about courseware, right? So there's a lot of good things on the courseware tab. A couple of the things in here are uh, this library uh, file. We're going to talk about this later. You may as well just save and download this. Uh, but then there are quick links like that, the ADCON1 uh, register. There's just a quick little table here. And then this OSC1 register. It's also in there. And the way this works is there are only three bits uh, that interest us, uh, IRCF. 1, IRCF uh, 2, and IRCF 0. Um, internal oscillator frequency select. Um, so not quite sure how they got um, IRCF out of that, but that's what it is. There are three bits, um, which gives you a total of eight options for how fast you set your clock to. Uh, the one that we use is, of course, 4 megahertz. Um, this little note here is what set the default. Uh, I think this is a later slide, but I'll cheat and mention it now. Um, so if you don't set anything at all, it sets it to 1 megahertz. Um, but if you do want to set it to something um, other than that, you set those three bits. 1, 1, 0, uh, you can see would be 4 megahertz, which no surprise is why we always set it to 1, 1, 0. So if you wanted to set it to something different, uh, you would just set the bits different. Uh, so just to see if you can do it, see if you can set it to 125 kilohertz. Should be easy. All right, I'm going to do it as well. Uh, so 125 kilohertz. Uh, go look at a handy uh, table somewhere. Uh, so it looks like 125 uh, is this guy right here. So 001. That's nearly as slow as we can go, it turns out. That's actually quite slow. Uh, so if I wanted to fill this out, it would be just 0, 0, 1. So pretty easy there. Um, oh, this is, uh, I answered this earlier. Uh, so what speed is it? If you, if you just completely delete them, um, it goes at 1 megahertz. Sometimes you don't care what the speed is, um, and you could just leave them off. It'll default to 1 megahertz, which is often fine. Um, but I just wanted you to know what the default was. From there, there's an important step. Um, so there's the clock frequency, which is one thing. And then an entirely separate thing is what's called the instruction cycle frequency. The instruction cycle frequency is it's how long does it take a single instruction to happen, right? So that's one assembly line instruction, uh, which is a detail I'll get into. And the important thing is that there's always this one to four ratio where it takes four clock ticks to do one instruction. And the reason for that is that you fetch the instruction on one clock tick, uh, you decode it on the next clock tick, you execute it uh, on the clock tick after that, um, and then there's a tick to store it um, at the end. Different microcontrollers work different. It depends on how the person that built the ALU set it all up. Um, don't worry about that. Just know that the pick, there's always this one to four separation. 
Um, and this actually explains the 4 megahertz a little better. So we use a 4 megahertz clock such that we can get a 1 megahertz instruction cycle. Um, so that's why we picked that number, actually. And it turns out that you can do exactly 1 million instructions in a second. Um, and that same math works out to where every instruction takes exactly 1 microsecond. Um, so that's why we picked that clock. It makes the math easy. <laughs> that's the only reason we pick it. Um, <clears throat> I will give you the warning, uh, so kind of a reminder here, it's one-fourth, that C statements are not instructions. C statements are for you to read, um, and then the compiler converts it into assembly, right? So it converts it into assembly. So this line right here, addcon1 equals this, it turns out it actually breaks down into two different assembly language instructions. If you happen to read assembly, it says move the literal into the working variable um, and make that value 0x0f. And then it says move the working variable um, into the file system. Um, and so move it into uh, this location. Um, and so that's how it converts C into assembly. And you never really know how many instructions it takes to do a C statement. That's the only point I wanted to make. So in this example, it took eight clock cycles uh, to do the addcon1 uh, equals, you know, f. Um, and then it turns out that the trisb setting, since it was getting set to zero, it could actually do that faster. Um, so it actually did that in only one clock cycle. Um, and that's just because setting it to zero can happen faster than setting it to some other value. Um, so this total thing uh, took 12 clock cycles to run those two statements. Um, so just kind of neat, uh, but a level of detail you don't care about. So really you could use instruction cycles to, to cause delays for you if you wanted. So in this example, um, we're turning on um, and off an LED and then we're leaving it on uh, for a certain length of time, and then we've got it off for a certain length of time. And what I'm doing here is I'm running a loop from 0 to 30,000. Inside this loop, I have a function called NOP. Uh, it stands for no operation. Um, it just means do nothing, just burn, burn a second, right? Or burn, a, burn an instruction cycle is what I meant to say. So this will delay for some length of time. The trouble is, um, I assure you, it will not be 30,000 instruction cycles. It will be some number bigger because the for loop takes time. Um, and so you could use something like this uh, to do time delays as well if you wanted. There's a better way, uh, which we'll talk about next time. All right, so that's it for uh, now. Come back next time, and we'll learn a little bit more about uh, delays, I think, is up next. See you then.